Eclampsia management, the drug of choice no doubt is magnesium sulphate dot 7 H2O is the full formula. So that magnesium sulphate is the drug of choice. It can be given in the IM plus IV method which is the Pritchard's regime or the IV only regime known as the Zuspan regime and the method of choice is the Pritchard's regime, Pritchard's regime. So how do we give it? IV magnesium sulphate 4 grams first and intramuscular max self 10 grams. Since it is a large volume of uh, a drug then we must split it 5 grams in one buttock and the other 5 grams in other buttock. So yes, 14 grams is the loading dose. If there is no relief, plus another 2 grams can be given IV if no relief. Now, this is the acute management, the IV bolus given and the IM given afterwards. So 14 grams is the loading dose. Now, after giving this, we must follow up the max self intramuscularly for 24 hours after the last convulsion or the delivery whichever is later not earlier. What is the meaning of this statement? I have given a max self intravenous and giving intravenous max self the the convulsion has stopped. Now, I must maintain this intramuscularly so that she does not throw a convulsion and slowly, slowly the irritability in the brain should also settle and the patient should become better. So, how do we make sure that she does not throw a convulsion again? We maintain the intramuscular max cell for 24 hours. So, suppose she has delivered at uh, 3 p.m. today afternoon, then I must give it the next injection at 7 p.m., then at 11 p.m., 3 a.m., 7 a.m., 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, and then 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. So when I am giving at 3 p.m. the last injection, that time she throws another convulsion. How long will I give it now? Till 3 p.m. day after, yes. So the idea is that whenever there is a convulsion or there is a delivery, we must give the cover of myself at least for 24 hours after that event, whichever is later, either 24 hours after the delivery or 24 hours after the convulsions have passed. So when I am giving this intramuscular magnesium sulphate, I must monitor the knee jerks. They should be present because magnesium sulphate acts on the brain and it causes suppression of brain. It increases the threshold of convulsion. We know all of that, isn't it? So yes, knee jerks are upper motor neuron reflexes. So if the brain is suppressed too much by the max self, the knee jerks will get absent. So do not give the next injection, hold the next shot. So knee jerk should be present. Similarly, the respiratory drive should not be suppressed. Respiratory rate should be more than 14 beats, 14 times per minute and the output, the renal output should be more than 100 ml in the last 4 hours. So when I am giving this injection after 4 hours, in that last 4 hours there should be at least 100 ml of urine output. Why? Because magnesium sulphate has renal excretion, almost exclusive renal excretion. So that is why if the output is low and that means the max self is still circulating in the body and will cause toxicity if you give another shot. So if these 3 are normal, then we will give the next shot. Please remember these are all MCQ questions. What are the criteria for giving? a next dose of max self. So yes, this is how I continue giving max self for the next 24 hours. But now I want to ask you, why is this delivery mentioned already? Why is this delivery word mentioned? I started this discussion that I am going to talk about treatment of eclampsia. I told you the drugs for eclampsia and I told you that you must give it for IV and then IM and the IM should be maintained for 24 hours after the delivery or of the last convulsion. My question is, where did the delivery word come in from? 
Suppose she is 34 weeks of a pregnancy and has thrown a convulsion. You do a delivery. So now let's revise. When the patient came to me for the first time at 28 weeks and her blood pressure was 140 by 90 or 140 by 94, I started giving her a tablet of let's say Lebetalol and uh, I was hoping that yes, you have hypertension pregnancy. I hope you never throw a convulsion. She goes home. After two weeks, she comes for a follow-up. And in my OPD, I see her blood pressure is 140 by 100. This time, she also has proteinuria. Okay, you are getting into preeclamptic toxemia. I am admitting you, bhai. It is getting a little scary. I hope you don't throw a convulsion. So, I admit her. I increase the lebetalol. I add some hydrazine tablet also. At 34 weeks, in the hospital, while she is admitted, on antihypertensive drugs, she throws a convulsion. Now, when she throws a convulsion, what did I say? Worst case scenario of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy is a convulsion. Now, that has happened. What is going to happen next? Next, she is going to die, isn't it? She is going to go into a, a HELP syndrome and a cavernous venous thrombosis and she is going to have DIC and she is going to die. So, yes, if she's thrown a convulsion in hypertensive disorders, it is the worst case scenario. Please deliver. Please deliver. Remember, it is pregnancy induced hypertension. So, remove the pregnancy and treat the hypertension. So, yes, why did I say delivery? Because delivery is the single most important step in the treatment of eclampsia. Almost 90% patients. 90% patients and more are normotensive within one week of delivery. So that's what is important. Why did I say delivery when we are discussing eclampsia? That is the most definitive management. It is the single most important step. It is the most definitive management of eclampsia. Do the delivery, patient will be fine. So yes, now you are saying it is 34 weeks. How am I going to the delivery? I am not bothered how we going to the delivery. If the patient is in labor, she will deliver normally. 34 weeks, she is not likely to be in labor. I will do a cesarean section. There is no contraindication to do a caesarean in a high blood pressure. She will not bleed to her death. Please do not have that notion. We can do a caesarean if she is 34, 35 weeks and she is going to deliver only after 2, 3 days of uh, labor induction. So, yes, I am not going to take so much of time after the patient has thrown convulsion. So, I would want to deliver her fast. Now, suppose she throws a convulsion at 38, 39 weeks and she is in labor. She is around 4, 5 centimeters. I would wait for the normal delivery to happen. So, it is not that I must do a normal delivery only or I must do a caesarean only. It is not like that. Obstetrically, I must finish things fast because what is the cause of the hypertension? Pregnancy induced hypertension. So, terminate the pregnancy, blood pressure will become normal, patient will survive. Now, yes, when we are doing the management of eclampsia with the magnesium sulphate, to reduce the convulsion, what do, you go, what do you do next? What do you give along with the magnesium sulphate? Yes? Uh, in other words, what is the effect of magnesium sulphate on the blood pressure of the patient? No, it does not cause the reduction of blood pressure. Magnesium sulphate is not an antihypertensive drug. So, you will have to give, in addition to magnesium sulphate, injection of IV Labetalol. Yes. So, yes, if I had asked you a question, what is the drug of choice for hypertensive emergencies in pregnancy? You would have all said Labetalol. But if I am asking in a different way, I am asking you that patient is throwing a convulsion, you give magnesium sulphate for the control of convulsion. What do you do for the control of blood pressure? You all say magnesium sulphate is an antihypertensive drug. No, it is not. Magnesium sulphate reduces the chances of convulsion. It does not reduce the blood pressure. So, the blood pressure you have to give IV labetalol. So, if I ask you in an MCQ, what is the drug of choice for hypertensive emergency in pregnancy? All of you know the answer because it is an MCQ. You know it is IV labetalol. Now, what do you give after magnesium sulphate in hypertension? Most of you will forget that you have to write labetalol here. This is that emergency. Yes, this is that emergency where you need the IV labetalol. Name one 
hypertensive emergency in pregnancy. Name the only hypertensive emergency in pregnancy you know. Eclampsia, isn't it? So, yes, IV labetalol is given a dose of 20 milligrams IV over 10 minutes. And if it does not respond, then I can give another 20. I can go up to 40 milligrams next. And if that does not work, then I can give uh, 80 milligrams in 10 minutes. So, yes, in one episode of hypertension, you want to control that hypertension and make sure the blood pressure is settled in that one moment. You can go up to 220 milligrams of levetalol. So, yes, levetalol is an alpha plus beta blocker and it is the drug of choice for hypertensive emergencies in pregnancy. We, we would also give hydrolazine earlier. Yes, this is what we give as MVA students. We could give 5 to 10 milligrams IV bolus for the management of blood pressure along with the management of the convulsion. Now, what else should you do for the management of the convulsion? Now, the patient is convulsing, she is unconscious obviously and her hands are moving, her whole body is moving and she is unconscious. So, what happens? The tongue falls back and she can choke on herself, she can aspirate her secretions, isn't it? So, what do we do? We put a head on the side, we put a head on the side like this, she is convulsing, we know she is convulsing, but hold her head on the side like this and her mouth is open and the tongue falls out. So, all the secretions roll out from the body and she will not choke on herself, keep the head on the side. Now, when the convulsion stops and before she throws the next convulsion, make sure she has got an IV access, you have started the max self and you have restrained her hands and legs in loose restraints and not very tight restraints and keep her on a left lateral or a right lateral position like this, so that the secretions keep drooling out and when she throws a convulsion, she does not aspirate. Now, what do you do for something called the tongue bites? The patient will also be clattering, clattering her teeth when she is convulsing, she will be doing like, like that. So, when she is clattering her teeth, she can have tongue bites. So, what can you do? You can prevent a tongue bite by putting a mouth gag, now do not say mouth gags. Yes, I know some of your favorite books are writing mouth gags. Mouth gags if at all, they will only obstruct the airway. You take a handkerchief and put it in the mouth, you take a gauze piece and put it in the mouth. If you stuff a mouth, then you will only obstruct the airway. So, do not obstruct the airway by a mouth gag. It is contraindicated in any convulsion, any epilepsy also, not just eclampsia, and even, even in epileptics, do not obstruct the airway. So, yes, you should put a airway, you should put a Goodell's airway, which will suppress the tongue and maintain the oxygenation of the patient and also prevent a tongue bite. So, yes, if, uh, if you see the teeth, and this is the tongue here. So, yes, you put in the Goodell's airway here, and this Goodell's airway is a salastic tube. This salastic tube will avoid the tongue from getting caught in the teeth and will also maintain the oxygenation, isn't it? So, that is a best thing to have, the Goodell's airway. So, in any, any emergency we say A, B, C, airway, breathing, circulation. So, yes, circulation is not a problem, the blood pressure is actually high, but airway should be maintained so that breathing is established. So, yes, you must keep this airway to prevent the tongue bite and also let the woman breathe. Now, if you are in a periphery and you do not have an airway for some reason, then do not put anything in the mouth, all right? Let, let, her, let, her, let her have tongue bites, it is okay. Tongue bites are on the sides of the tongue, you know, they are like here. So, tongue bites are not going to be fatal, it is just a tongue bite, even if you do not give anything in a week or so, it will get all right. So, yes, nobody comes with a tongue bitten off, please, that is not going to happen, only the tongue is going to have bites on the side. So, yes, if a patient has no, a patient has no access to an airway, 
doesn't matter don't put anything in the mouth don't put a spoon in the mouth don't put a stick in the mouth and yes don't go and take out your shoe and put it on her nose so that she's convulsing and the convulsion stops because of the noxious stimulus from your shoe you know it is uh, some of these uh, movies keep showing you that uh, if a person is convulsing then you can put the shoe on the nose and the it's understood that uh, an indian shoe will have something like 20 grams of cow dung per square inch so a noxious stimulus will stop the convulsion please th all that is not to be done I i'm sure you're not doing that also but remember we must maintain the airway and the breathing circulation is not a problem because the blood pressure is actually high